Mary Meet, this is Annie, with a video response to both Mo and to Scissors, who posted this week about ways we might practice our rights when we either cannot afford tools or we live in an environment where we need to keep our practice private. The mudra of the hand is the most important mudra that I personally use for practice when I want to meditate without using any tools. I was taught that the four fingers of the hand relate to the four elements. From tradition to tradition, the fingers may differ as far as which corresponds to which element. That does not matter. What matters is what it ends up feeling for you. I was taught there were two projecting fingers of the hand, representing air and fire. Together, the power of directing the athame without a blade. And I was taught that the next two fingers are the receptive fingers of the hand, water and earth. The fifth finger, our thumb, is akasha, and wrapped deep within us the knowledge of the shadow, the knowledge of what's inside. So a meditation on the elements would be air, fire, water, earth, and akasha. In addition to that, the crescent moon is the sign of the goddess, and the raised horns, the sign of the god. So the fingers of the hand are powerful tools for meditation, for calling on the elements, for spell work, for prayer. The hand is also a powerful tool which can be used to create quiet, personal, ritual, and sacred space. For example, I'll use some parts of the ritual that I would use and demonstrate the mudra I would use if I wanted to have a introspective, quiet, or totally silent ritual. I would generally begin my circles by cleansing the space. Now, I'm not going to be an environment for this example where I can use sage or incense or use my broom to sweep or any of those things that require tools, extra things. This is what I have. I am going to, assuming this is north, cleanse this space. Holy and sacred, my offering is made, cleansing this space and banishing all which is unwelcome here. Blessing the space. Holy and sacred, my offering is made, blessing this space and declaring it a time and a place set aside. The next thing I would do in my ritual is honor presence. I'm not lighting a presence candle in this example. All is quiet. No tools, no candles involved. The mudra for that, for me, is the phoenix, at which time I incant in the name of that most ancient presence and the remainder of that incantation. The next thing I would do is honor my patron. I always invite her at the very beginning of my rituals. The mudra I have designed for her, being Hestia, is her holy lamp and the heart of her sacred flame. And I would incant the prayer that I say to her at the beginning of every ritual. The next thing I would do is call the elements. Hand motions are doing that. The wings of air. The triangle of fire. The chalice for water. The horizon for earth. I would then lead on to the as above so below incantation with 
as above, so below, and the rest of that. I would then call on Goddess, and I would call on the God. So through that process, we learn a bit about the power of sacred movement. Now we don't know each other, but in the short time we spent during this video, I'm going to assume you're going to know exactly what I'm doing. Mary part. And for any of the animal lovers who were watching and wondered who the little furry dude was that was hanging out under my small altar table, this is Ernie, our French bulldog, who's been napping the whole time, who loves to come in when I'm doing quiet ritual with no tools, because being a bulldog, he can't be in the room when there's incense. He just can't breathe it properly with that squished nose. So he loves rituals without tools because he can be present and not get the sneezes. He wants to go back to his nap now.